Yes, finally, I'm back with this series. I've discussed the witches and doppels of Madoka Magica several times already, and now that the English dub of Magia Record has finally finished its last season, it's time for me to talk about Magia Record in detail. Full spoilers ahead, both for Madoka Magica and Magia Record. You've been warned. Now, Magia Record started out as an app game, one that sadly isn't in America anymore, but it also got a two season long anime to accompany it. Well, technically it's like two and a half, but whatever. If you know anything about Magia Record, you know that there are a lot of magical girls, and almost all of them have their own doppels. So figuring out where to start or how to narrow down who I'll talk about here was no easy task. But today I've decided to pick four specific girls because they all have a very specific theme that ties them all together that I found fascinating. Now, before we get into that, let me explain what a doppel is, just in case you're not fully on board with the topic and how it works. I've mentioned them before, but for clarification, doppels play a very big role in the story and the character development we see in Magia Record. In Madoka Magica, when a magical girl's soul gem becomes dark, either by overusing too much magic or energy, or through emotional turmoil, they become a witch. However, in Magia Record's timeline, suddenly people started obtaining doppels instead, a sort of hybrid between the girl and the witch, which also can completely purify your soul gem without the use of a grief seed. There are side effects to overusing your doppel, however. If you do it too much, then your doppel will take over and you'll become a witch anyways. As we've talked about in prior videos, the girls' doppels clearly resemble their inevitable witch forms. So by taking a closer look at these girls, their doppels, and if they have them, their witch forms, we can learn more and more about these characters. I think it's fitting that the first girl we're gonna talk about is Iroha, the main character from Magia Record, both the app and the anime. Design-wise, Araha is pretty clearly meant to invoke the idea of Madoka, but still be clearly different. The long straight hair is an obvious difference between Madoka's spiky pigtails, but the fact that they both share almost exactly the same shade of pink make them feel similar to each other. Mostly this was probably done for a marketing reason, because when you see that art style and that shade of pink, it's pretty iconic in terms of recognizability. She also wears a lot of white and pink in her outfit, just like Madoka, and even her soul gem is shaped and placed in a rather similar way as Madoka. She even uses a crossbow, a weapon that's an awful lot like Madoka's longbow. It's basically meant to be that you see Iroha and you initially think it's Madoka, but then when you take a closer look, you start to realize all the differences. So let's take a closer look at what makes Iroha unique. Let's discuss her soul gem, since I just mentioned it. It's a little circle that sits on her collarbone, acting as the clasp for her hooded cape. I do think Iroha's soul gem is placed here, because the cape element of her design plays an important role in pairing her with other characters. It's a circular shape, and that might be a reference to Iroha's name, which means ring, another thing that makes her similar to Madoka, whose name meant circle. And I believe ring might be referencing the way how doppels work, like you come back around to it over and over again. Looking at her outfit, Iroha seems reminiscent of Rogue, a typical hooded archer from a fantasy story. Umi Aoki, the person who designed Iroha, has explained that initially they weren't planning on making her the main character. So the roguelike elements might have initially come from a different idea they had for the character beforehand. I speculate on this because nothing much about Iroha feels very roguelike. The most I can think of is the fact that she was fighting very hard to keep her magical activities a secret from her friends and family. I think the real reason she has the hood and cape is because Iroha has a lot of bird symbolism and imagery woven into their design, and the hood and cape play into those concepts really well. The hood can look like a beak, and the cape can look like wings. Birds in general tend to be pretty important in Magia Record. So let's dive into Iroha's bird themes. Iroha's doppel clearly resembles a bird. Specifically, it gets called a cuckoo. I always thought it looked like one of these things, which I found out while making this video, is that they're called dippy birds, which is adorable. <laughs> her doppel is named Giovanna and comes out of Iroha's hair. Iroha's wish was to save her little sister, Ui. Ui was sick and didn't have long to live, so Iroha 
wished she could be healthy again. This led to Iraha's magical ability being basically a healing spell. Unlike Sayaka, who heals herself, however, Iraha can only heal others. And technically what she's doing isn't actually healing. What it technically is, is reversal. She didn't really heal Ui's sickness, she just reversed her body's deterioration until she was at a point where she was healthy again. And that's how she's healing others. Now, it's interesting that Giovanna doesn't carry any of those healing qualities into her design. Something we see that Giovanna looks a lot like Toka and Nemu's doppels as well, meaning the three girls who are closest to Ui all share a really similar doppel design. I theorize that the only reason Giovanna looks this way is because of the fact Ui was accidentally erased from reality. I think Ui's departure had some sort of profound impact on the three girls, and that shaped them, and in turn, their doppels simultaneously. And I think that's why Giovanna comes out of her hair. It's because Giovanna symbolizes the lost memory of Yui. Basically, it's falling out of her head, and she can't remember her. Giovanna even wraps cloth around Iraha's eyes and ears, shielding her from seeing the world. Perhaps it's shielding her from facing the reality where her sister is gone. In the anime, Iraha explains that when her doppel takes over, she can create a dreamscape where Ui is still with her. Giovanna is protecting and shielding Iraha from the harsh truth of the real world and letting her be safe and happy in her dream state. Giovanna is even called the doppel of silence. Birds in general symbolize transcendence and freedom, which I can see how you can make that an argument for those qualities to describe Iraha. I tried looking up the symbolism surrounding the cuckoo specifically, but there's so many different ones and they all seem to contradict each other. I eventually narrowed it down to what the Japanese symbolism for a cuckoo is, and I found out that they symbolize the longing of the spirits of the dead to return to their loved ones, which seems like a pretty close fit for how Iraha feels about Ui. Now there is one more crucially important element about Giovanna, and that involves the story Night on the Galactic Railroad. This is a famous Japanese novel written by Kenji Miyazawa, and this author and their works actually tie into all four of these girls together. Now in Magia record in general, there's a lot of train imagery and symbolism. Hell, at the end we straight up see the train flying straight up into the sky and into space. Night on the Galactic Railroad is Magia Records equivalent to how Madoka Magica takes heavy inspiration from the story of Faust. The main character in Night on the Galactic Railroad is called Giovanni, the male equivalent to Giovanna, just like Ira has doppel. In the story, Giovanni has a bedridden mother and a father who's gone away. He also technically has a sister, but she only gets briefly mentioned, I think. I think the idea of Giovanni's parents have been fused together to create the relationship Iraha has with Ui, a sick, bedridden family member, and also someone who's gone away and our hero insists will be coming back. In the story, Giovanni and their best friend, Campanella, fall asleep on a grassy hill and board the galactic train, and it becomes pretty clear that the idea of the train is a symbolism for death or at least leads to the afterlife in a certain way. During their misadventures on the train, they talk about seeing the regular Christian heaven. Campanella even leaves the train to go on to the afterlife, and when Giovanni wakes up, Campanella has actually died in real life too. It's a vehicle that offers them magical and fantastical moments and adventures, but also seems like a fast track to death, which is not too dissimilar to the act of becoming a magical girl. But like I said, Araha isn't the only one who has ties to the night on the Galactic Railroad. Road. So let's shift our focus to Yachio next. Yachio is one of the older known magical girls, and Iraha's close friend. Yachio is said to be in college and owns a little house that she and other magical girls on her team stay in. She's a famous model that gets photo shoots and is in magazines and everything, and that might be the reason why her magical outfit is the way it is. It's meant to be fashion forward. Ooh, but look at those stars on her dress. A bit like flying into the galaxy on a railroad, am I right? <laughs> on that note, her soul gem is even shaped like a crescent moon, which is another allusion to the Night on the Galactic Railroad theme, topping it all off with the fact that her doppel's name is Campanella, just like Giovanni's best friend in the story. Campanella is the ticket-taking doppel, which is apt because it's designed to look like a combination of a ticket puncher, like like the ones you use when boarding a train, and a scorpion, wearing a fancy little hat because she's a model, so fancy. <laughs> the ticket taker part should be obvious by now, but the scorpion half of her design has more meaning to it. While on their adventure in the galactic train, Gio 
Giovanni and Campanella met the constellation Scorpio. Scorpio explains how it was once running from a predator, but fell down a well and drowned. While it was drowning, the scorpion wished that he could have instead let the predator eat him, because then at least his death would have done somebody some good. He then burst into flames and became the constellation Scorpio, using a light on its tail to guide others. This light on the end of the scorpion's tail is even referenced with the in-game sprite of Campanella. The scorpion drowning is one reference to the reason why Yachio has the magical ability to control water. But there's also another reason. Remember how I said Giovanni woke up to realize that Campanella had died in real life? Well, the way Campanella had died was by drowning after trying to save someone who had fallen off of a boat. Yachio and her doppel personify both of these elements here. Hell, even that fancy hat she's wearing might be a reference. After Giovanni found out Campanella had passed away, he spoke to Campanella's father, and he's specifically described as wearing a long-brimmed dark hat, kind of similar to the one Yachio is wearing when she's Campanella. Yachio also has another magical ability, which is the power to receive hope from the people who are close to her after they die, because she carries their strength on with her after they pass, which is how she stays so strong after being a magical girl for so many years. Her wish was to survive, and the hope of the other girls help her to do so. Now, let's talk about one of those friends, and arguably, Yachio's prior closest friend, Mifuyu. All we do is suffer and end up losing everything! Mifuyu was Yachio's closest friend before she left the team and joined the Wings of Magius. She had grown up with overly strict and controlling parents, so she wished that she could be free in her dreams. This gave her the ability to create lifelike illusions and hallucinations. Some important elements with Mifuyu is the fact that her soul gem is placed in almost the exact same spot that Iraha's is placed. The rest of her outfit, at least from what I can tell, doesn't have any significance with the design. I'm pretty sure it was just meant to look cute, and it is. Her weapon is called a Moon Ring Blade, which again ties into the galactic theme some more, and also the crescent moon shape of Yachio's soul gem. Hell, I'd believe that Mifuyu's soul gem, while technically just being a circle, could be meant to represent either a full or new moon, to further pair her thematically with the galactic theme and Yachio's design. Now, let's look at those little horns in her hairstyle. I think it's meant to resemble a great horned owl, which becomes tenfold more apparent once we see her doppel. Her doppel is named Havelius, who seems to be named after an astronomer who was studying the moon. Havelius is the birdcatcher doppel, so technically the owl shape might just be some sort of camouflage to help her catch birds. Remember what I said when I was talking about Iraha? Birds tend to play a really big role across many of the characters in Magia Record, so being a birdcatcher makes her a good opposite to Giovanna's design. Now, why is it an owl specifically? Well, while some people say owls symbolize like wisdom and stuff, I don't think that fits Mifuyu. Not that she's dumb or anything. Rather, I think it's playing into the idea that owls are often bad omens, symbolizing death instead. Mifuyu is afraid of dying. That's why she joins the wings of Magius. She thinks she is weak, and she thinks she's often on death's door every step of the way. I also think it's pretty poignant that Yachio has a scorpion design for her doppel. And do you want to guess what kind of things owls eat? It's scorpions. <laughs> Havelius also creates a swarm of paper-like birds called sugar geese. This all might seem a little bit random, but would you believe me that this is another reference to the Galactic Railroad? During Giovanni and Campanella's travels, they encounter a man who catches various birds and then sells them as sweets. That explains the sugar element to her sugar geese. Now then, we've talked about Iraha and her best friend Yachio, and we've talked about Yachio's prior best friend Mifuyu. There's only one girl left. Ira Araha's prior best friend, Kuroe. Kuroe, who, importantly, is different than Kuro. I've talked about Kuro before and how she became the witch Matasa Buro. This new Kuroe seems to have taken the OG Kuro as inspiration, but this is a completely different character. Now then, a lot of her design elements seem reminiscent of Iroha's. With the hooded cape, exposed midriff, Iroha has elements of black in her design, and Kuroe has elements of pink in hers. I do think it's funny that the two prior friend characters both have primarily black color palettes. Her weapon is a baton, which we find out in her side story in the game that she was in the baton twirling team before becoming too busy being a magical girl. In that same side story, we discover that the wish she made was to be able to go out with the boy she had a crush on. Now, the wiki says her magical ability is affirmation 
confirmation of her existence, which sounds like some real ironwood semblance is metal bullshit to me. Like, like you can't quantify that as a magical trait. <laughs> as time passes though, Kuroe breaks up with her boyfriend because she feels like she's been tricking him this whole time. You know, it's not real love. You wished for him to love you. That's, that's not the same thing, you know? And this actually makes her in anime ability make much more sense. The ability to put up walls. Kuroe unfortunately seems to suffer from depression. She's very down and hard on herself. She's really weak and regularly fails to save people before a witch kills them. All of this makes sense when we look at her doppel, Ichizo. The doppel of escape, taking the form of a giant nighthawk with wings made of mud. Even her doppel symbolizes her idea of futility. Since her wings are made of mud, they're obviously too heavy to ever let her fly. Often the mud clings to Kuroe herself and pulls her down further. And would you believe that all of this is also a reference to other works from Kenji Miyazawa? Another novel of his called The Nightjar Star. It's about a nightjar named Ichizo, just like Kuroe's doppel. Once again, it's the bird theme coming back. Birds! It's all birds! <laughs> In the Nightjar Star, Ichizo is hated by the other birds. Eventually, Ichizo runs away from them all and flies up into the sky, begging the constellations to turn him into a star, which he does eventually do so. Now, despite being a different novel, there's still quite a few thematic similarities between the Nightjar Star and the Galactic Railroad, something that I think becomes even more clear once we see the full witch form Kuroe inevitably turns into. Yes. Unfortunately, Kuroe's fate is to become a witch in the end, becoming a fully embodied nightjar, her wings covered in mud and the hollow, empty shaft of feathers, never able to attain flight and never able to reach the star in the distance. Now, there's one last thing about Ichizo that I think actually directly ties her to the Galactic Railroad. In her doppel's description, the very last line says, After being completely eaten away by this doppel, the only choice one has is to become a black star that stands motionless on the Earth's surface. Now this might feel like a stretch, but in the Galactic Railroad, when Giovanni and Campanella thought they were nearing the end of their journey, the train came to a giant black hole in the sky. And I know black holes and a black star aren't technically the same thing, but maybe, at least to some degree, Kuroe and Ichizo represent that black hole in one way or another. Regardless, that was all the information I could find out about these four girls. Not a bad start in terms of dissecting the Magia record characters, if I do say so myself. This was so much fun. It was so much fun learning about these different novels and seeing exactly how much of these themes got tied into the girls and in the anime in general. Basically, if you watch the first episode of Magia Record, the whole thing is filled to the brim with different symbolism that comes directly from Night on the Galactic Railroad. It was just fascinating to me and how many of these different elements got tied into many different ways across all these girls. And there's other girls out there too. There's other characters who also take references from not only Night on the Galactic Railroad, but other works from this author. And I can't wait to take a closer look at all of those characters and all the characters beyond that. There's so many girls. There's so many girls. <laughs> there's also a whole new batch of witches that we got this time around, and I might take a crack at dissecting those too. There's still a lot more Madoka Magica and Magia record goodness for me to cover, so let me know what you want me to cover next time. <laughs> Shout out to my $10 patrons, you're all amazing. Nako, Cool Duck, Andrew, Ramiel, Valhalla Knight, Chamomile, G Extreme, Classy Critic, Noah Perkins, Sunny Shy, Great Bar, Jake, Amber, Hype Man, Zero to Hero, Isaiah, Scaring Crows, Not All That Evil, Messiah Complex, Jacob, Virus, Ben's Sketchbook, Omega Fighter, Trash, Wild Pilot, Josh, Swift Cannon, and The Infinity Effect. I hope you liked this video, finally back, with Madoka Magic stuff. Yeah! <laughs> I, mean, I wanted to do this like last year, but the, the English dub wasn't out yet. So I finally got to do it, and now I can't wait to do it even more. So much fun. If there's any specific girls you want me to talk about, any specific like themes or clumps of girls, I know they come in like teams and pairs and stuff. And if you want me to talk about the witches and theorize about the magical girls who might have become these witches, let me know in the comments. I can't wait wait to cover more Magia Record stuff, and I got even more Madoka Magica content coming really soon. So keep your eyes out, it's gonna be a little bit different than this, but I'm excited for it. I hope you liked this video, let me know all your thoughts and opinions, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.